All right. Hey, well, good morning. It's good to see everybody here today, and uh, welcome online. We're going to get started here in just like about one minute, maybe two minutes. Uh, we just want to make sure our online is working uh, properly. So grab a Bible, make sure you have an outline. If you don't have one yet, uh, they're available. Mr. Louie's right there. He'll pass this to you. Uh, but uh, we'll get started here in just a few minutes. Good to see y'all. Oh yeah, we're there. We'll see what happens. Who knows? If you're there with us online, comment below so we know you're there. And happy Father's Day to y'all. Yeah, right? Father's Short of Father's Christmas Father's and Easter, best day of the year. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Changes nothing in my life. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> any, other, any other dads out there? Doesn't really change much of a thing, but uh, definitely makes you pause for a moment. <laughs> and... Uh, be thankful for the blessings that we do have for those that, who are dads um, and for all of us um, who have um, who have fathers, dads, and those that have been uh, significant influences in our lives. And above all things, we have a gracious Heavenly Father that loves us through it all. Amen? Amen. Man, I'm glad he's been patient with me. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, we're going to jump right in. And uh, we've been in this series uh, titled Things Jesus Never Said, and uh, we're, we're taking kind of a fun um, turn on, uh, or a fun play on memes and those things that you might see on Facebook or uh, social media, or even maybe uh, good um, words of wisdom that people may have shared with you that, that sound biblical, but perhaps they're not quite fully there. Perhaps they, there's some things that I'm sure you may have read or you've heard from people that, that again, sound good. And they might even attribute it to God's word or say, hey, remember, Jesus said this. We thought, wow, that sounds really good. But the, the, the fact is, there's some things in life that we, we find ourselves founding major decisions on that perhaps... Jesus really didn't say that. Maybe God's word really didn't say that. And so that's kind of the flip side of this series. It's been fun. We've got this week and next week. And I really think today is probably the most common one that I've heard personally. And we're going to really get to the bottom of it today. Let's start at the top. You know what? Let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. And God, we thank you for all that you do and all that you are. Lord, we 
celebrate you for being a good father. Lord, we thank you for the dads that we celebrate today, the fathers uh, that are represented here at Crossroads and the families that are represented and, and everyone here. But above all things, we, are, we praise you for your good love, your gracious love, and that you desire to walk this life with us as a good, good father. Lord, would you bless this teaching today? Uh, Lord, I pray that we would learn something, whether we're here in person, streaming online, whatever that looks like, God, that we would uh, be found in your word and basing our decisions and making sure that things that may sound good, that they're truly founded upon you and your word. Lord, lead us today. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You see, the problem, here's a quote, one of my favorite quotes, I love this, and I, I read this recently. Uh, the problem, get your pens ready, because I'm going to have a little pop quiz on the top of your outline. Here's a quote. The problem with quotes found on the internet is that they are often not true. How many would agree with that, right? Let's, let me say it again. The problem with quotes found on the internet is that they are often not true. And I could not believe when, when I saw this, it, it was amazing to know. Can anybody guess who said that? Anybody want to just take a wild guess? Very familiar. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Write that in there. Abraham Lincoln. So, I mean, it's crazy to think that even Abraham Lincoln himself attributed that the problem with quotes found on the internet is that they are often not true. How many struggle to believe that, that Abraham Lincoln had an issue with the internet? Okay, thank God, right? But some of you are thinking, oh my gosh. I know, even Abraham Lincoln had Wi-Fi problems, right? Uh, spoiler alert, there was no internet back then. All right, now we can all be, right? So that's how, that's how warped, to some degree, some things we find on the internet or some good, um, wise words that your friend might share with you, is that the truth is, there's a lot of bad quotes on the internet, yes? There's a lot of false information given from that may sound good, but they're not actually true. Now, did Abraham Lincoln say that? No. But the basis of that phrase was probably right. So, so again, that's, that's part of the flip side of what we're learning. But how many parts of your life are informed by words, ideas, feelings that you have, perhaps inaccurately, probably unintentionally attributed to Jesus or to God's word? Where's the line between what he actually told us and the things Jesus never said. You see, these days it's easy to see life the way you want to, yes? It's easy to see life the way we want to. We have a, a specific lens in which we view the world. That's called our, our world view and what we deem to be right, what we deem to be, here's what's, what's good for me or whatever that might look like or um, how we navigate through life. We have a world view and as Christians, it's important that we have a, a, a biblical worldview, amen, right? The way we perceive the way the world works, the way that we perceive how we do our jobs, the way we perceive how we handle uh, our finances, all the above is found and we'll, we will navigate through it. We should navigate through a biblical worldview. The same is true how we navigate through challenges, um, how we handle um, mistakes we may have made, made or, or perhaps mistakes made against us. Maybe there's people that have wronged us. How do we handle those situations? We've talked about that in the last couple of weeks. You see, we can filter our images at the world we live in today. We can pick the news and the angle of news that we want to hear and say, yep, that's right, that's good for me. So that's the only news I want to listen to. We can listen to our viewpoints that only agree with us, but when we do that, we distort and we begin to distort the view of the world. We begin to form what feels good to us is the only truth that there might be. Because you realize that sometimes there's things that even in God's word that's hard to hear. Yes? 
We've tackled some of that last couple of weeks. Lesson one, we talked about uncovering the misconception of forgiveness. Um, Jesus is very clear about forgiveness. He says, man, forgive. Forgive as I have forgiven you, right? But yeah, we can kind of navigate and hold some things and say, well, you know, but realities are, we're to forgive. Last week we talked about um, it's natural to try to do whatever it takes for us to be happy. And I think I'm going to revisit that, um, this lesson again, because there were some things I didn't tackle. Um, and I believe um, sometime in July I'm going to tackle that lesson again because, man, it was fun and it was, it was a lot of good content, but there's also things we didn't quite get to cover, uh, so we might revisit that a little bit again. Uh, but here's the fact. In week one, I asked the question this. How many of you are thankful that Jesus said he would never give you more than you can handle? How many of you are thankful that Jesus said that he would never give you more than you can handle? Very helpful. Recently, I had made that statement. Come on now. Lots of times. Yep. And so the first week, you really stepped on my toes. Oh. I'm, I'm thankful for it. <laughs> uh, so Mary Ellen just said, if you didn't, if you didn't hear that all of it, then Mary Ellen just said, the first week I asked that question, and then I asked, well, did Jesus really say that? She said, I just stepped on your toes. Well, I apologize for that, but I want to unpack it because I believe out of all this, did Jesus really say I think this is one of the, the most common phrases. Now, we can try to form some truth to fit that. I will say that. But the truth is, did Jesus really say that? Don, we just discussed it at our Thursday morning. Come on. Stephen said, <laughs> we all believed it. Yes. But it says, you will not be tempted. Ah, well, we'll get there. Come on, Don. All right. Here we go. Don is going to teach this message today. But how many of you, let's be honest, now let's ask this, show fans even online. How many of you ever heard that phrase? Jesus, man, I'm struggling through this time. Hey, let me tell you. Jesus will never give you more than you can handle. Praise the Lord, amen. It sounds good. And somewhere there's maybe some truth in that. But did Jesus really say it? Let's go on and cover that. So the facts are, um, he actually did it. And that's what we're going to tackle today. You see, here's, here's again the viewpoint and the power of this series is that when we acknowledge what Jesus didn't say, it helps us understand the power of what Jesus did say. And I really believe that. I really feel uh, that that's a lot of times when I'm preparing a message or um, you know, studying God's Word. Sometimes I like to look at it from the flip side of it. What is maybe the opposite or what is not true of it, it helps me understand what is true of it. Uh, and the same is true with God's Word. There's a lot of things out there that might be attributed to God's Word. Or, I'll tell you this, we live in a world of half-truth. I think a lot of our theology sometimes can be based on half-truths. And that's where we, we, we moved out of the Ephesian series and how significant it is that our theology, what we know about God and His Word and how He works in the heart of God, it will shape how you do life and the power of being in Christ. And so our theology matters. It's important that our theology, what we know about God, our study of God, isn't based upon half-truths, but the full truth of the Word of God. Amen? Uh, so here's some things that Jesus didn't say connected to, hey, aren't you happy Jesus never gave you more than you can handle? Oh, man, he didn't say that. Here's things Jesus didn't say. Whoever does the will of my Father will always get the best parking spots. Don't you wish Jesus would have said that? Come on, let's be honest. How many of you have been frustrated because you had to park in the back of the parking lot going to Smith's or somewhere, right? Have you ever found a parking, lot at, parking spot at Smith's? I don't think they, I don't know how they're always full every time you go Smith. But here, here's the reality. Um, Jesus did not say, if you lose your life for my sake, you'll always look good in your swimsuit. Yes? Right? Right? Uh, I, I, Jesus didn't say that. We wish he said that. Man, Lord, I'm serving you, but I just ain't quite got the summer bond that I was hoping for. Right? Uh, so we often go after some misconception. Uh, in our world. And did Jesus say this? But seek first the kingdom of God, and you will never get a big fat zip before prom or the big interview. Did Jesus ever say that? Did Jesus say that? 
How many wish Jesus did, right? Or you would never have a bad hair day. Ladies out there, how many of you, man, if, if, I, if I see first the kingdom of God, I'll never have another bad hair day. How many of you wish Jesus said that, right? Sometimes we think, God, what's, what's the deal, right? Lastly, followers of Jesus, did Jesus say, followers of Jesus will never have bad days. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus never said that if you follow me, if you seek the kingdom first, if you lose your life for the sake of my, for the sake of me and my kingdom, Jesus didn't say you'd have you wouldn't have that day. Actually, the flip side, the reality is this. Here's a teaching point. Jesus never promised you'd always be healthy, you'd always be wealthy, you'd always be thin. He never promised those three things. Jesus never said you'd never have bad days or bad hair days, relationship struggles, challenging circumstances. Jesus never said that. John 16, 20. Let's unpack some readers here today. Um, I need four or five of y'all. Uh, who wants to read John 16, 20? Thank you, Trish. Who will read John 16, um, 20 through 22? Kind of overlap that scripture. Thank you, Butch. Um, John 16, 33. Anybody, anybody, Louie, and then Dad will go to you. First Corinthians 10, 13, Dad, you got that one? And then 2 Corinthians 12, uh, 9 through 10. Who's got that? Thank you, Pastor Billy. All right, so John 16, 20. Here's the fact. Teaching point, Jesus never promised that you'd be healthy, wealthy, or thin. Jesus never said you'd have bad hair days, you wouldn't have relationship struggles, or you wouldn't have challenging circumstances. Here is... What Jesus did say, John 16, 20. Very truly I tell you, you will be more while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Amen. Read that one more time for us. Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Man, what stands out to you now? What speaks to you now? John 16, 20. What stands out to you? Right? So, so the facts are that the first part of that says we're going to have grief. We're going to have hard times. In this life, there will be tough days. You'll have hard days. There'll be things in, the law, in this life you don't understand. There's going to be things in this life because, again, but it says that what, what was the end of that scripture, Trish? Your grief, will turn to joy. Your grief will turn to joy. The facts are, once again, this is how important our theology is, our study of God, what we know of God's heart, right? We understand because of the fall of man in Genesis, we have the effects of sin throughout all humanity, yes, right? And that is carried on to work. We, until we see Jesus face to face, there will always be the effects of sin in the broken world that we live in. We just will. There will be people that wrong you because of sin. Because of the brokenness of, world, of the world. You have struggle in, in different areas. However, that grief, whatever that looks like, your grief, your mourning will turn to what? To joy. Amen? Amen? And this is a joy, this is a hope that the world cannot offer. How many of you find yourself or have found yourself thinking, man, why is it that some of the most pain in the people seem to get ahead in life? Yeah? I've said it. I've looked at it. Do you realize that is a biblical perspective? And even out of John 16, 20, it says the world rejoices while you're having bad days. But our hope isn't in this world. Amen? Amen. Once again, the biblical viewpoint of that is understanding even from, from the very time that mankind fell and sin entered, God was redeeming mankind back unto him. Always making a way to bring humanity back in right relationship with him. That's what it's all about. This world's going to be done and gone before we know it. It's crazy to think about what the realities are. We don't live for this world. We live for a kingdom and the kingdom of God. Amen? So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So the facts are, um, 
And in John 16, he actually begins to pray. And he, and he talks about this prayer. Uh, he teaches about the Holy Spirit. Uh, but then he begins to pray and he begins to teach them. And in this prayer, Jesus uses the word world 19 times. And he's saying, look, the ways of the world says this. The ways of the world says this is how you go after life. The ways of the world will say, this is what it takes to be happy. The ways of the world says, hey, if someone wronged you, here's how you should treat them. But Jesus says, for you are not, you are no longer of this world. Amen? You are to be in this world, but not of it. Once again, our theology matters. There's a way to do life God's way. There's a way to do life the world's way. And Jesus invites us to seek first the kingdom and to go after a life, even through the struggles, the challenges, the mountains we have to climb, the times that, is, is, that bring struggle and strife, that our hope is not found on this earth. And this grief this morning will turn to what? Joy. That's the promise. You see, Jesus did say, or did not say, in this life at all times, you got this, you're going to crush it, you go boy. Right? He did not say, you'll, you'll always get the best parking spot, never lose Wi-Fi. Hopefully you guys are back with us online. You've been losing Wi-Fi the last few weeks. That's been frustrating. Those are first world problems, amen? Yes? You understand the difference between first world problems and third world problems? Yeah. First world problems have Wi-Fi issues that we can't get streamed and all. Third world problems, millions of kids that went to bed without a meal yesterday, right? So, uh, let's, let's make that for just a second, right? This matters because this is where we're at, right? But it is first world problems. So, so the reality, here's this focus on this. If he didn't say you won't, uh, you won't want to trade in one of your kids, Father's Day, come on now, right? Any dads out there think someday, dang it, how did this one? <laughs> Dad, I know, we had to keep Brian. It just the way, just way it was. Just the way we had to keep Brian. I don't know, right? Um, but the facts are, we wouldn't navigate through times, never lose a job, dealing with backed up plumbing, right? That's got to be in the devil, amen? Right? <laughs> backed up plumbing has to be. Of the devil. I believe that with all my heart. But don't you think for a moment, sometimes you think, man, God, I'm following you, I'm loving you, I'm serving you, I'm in your word. Why don't you just take all these problems away? He says, yes. And I have a plan on how to do it. And according to his word, he's working it out right now. He's in the middle of it. He's moving this, this, and that to bless you, to move you, to, to, to all of the above. But we often only see you right here when he's doing all this. And remember, God's time frame isn't 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365. God's time frame is eternity. There's never been a beginning. There will be no end. And so he's right on time. And then we get impatient with that timing. It doesn't make it easy. But when we have a biblical viewpoint, a biblical worldview, it helps us as we navigate through these challenges. So those are things that Jesus didn't say. We talked a little about what he did, but the reality are uh, Jesus didn't say you're not going to have bad days. Let's look at what Jesus did say. Who's got John 16, 33? Okay, hold on real quick. Here's what I love about God's Word. I've learned through studying God's Word that God often brings a promise within an understanding, or He brings wisdom, or He says, hey, here, here's, here's where I'm leading you. Here's what you need to know, but here's going to be the blessing in it. So, so the promise, the blessing is what? Read 33, well, the first part, A. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have what? Peace, right? Now, again, if you look back at John 16, this is part of it. When he talks about the world, and he talks about the world, he says, man, the world's going to say, this is how you need to do it. This is what you need to go after. This is what's going to make you complete. This is what the world says. But he says, man, the, the, world's, gonna, the world's already fallen. I've come to redeem you, and I have come so that you might have peace. And it's a peace that the world can offer. It's a peace that only I can bring. 
and I bring it in the midst of your struggle. It's a peace that the world, man, this, you realize that for those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this is the closest to hell that we'll ever taste. I'm thankful for that. It also, it also hurts my heart that some may never taste the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So we have a job to do, amen? Paul says, man, I'd rather be with you, Lord. He says, but it's better for me to be here because God is using my life to spread the gospel, to be an encouragement at work, to do life differently. That someone says, man, what is different about you? Well, I have the peace of God, right? Going back to Ephesians. Grace and peace, because of God's grace, I have the peace of God, I have the peace with God that, that changes the way I do life. That's why our worldview matters. That's why a biblical foundation of making sure what Jesus really said is motivating, is leading, and is the navigating factor in how we do life. So John 16, 33, read that full verse again. I promise I won't cut you off. You know what? I don't promise that, but I'll do my best. I'll cut you off. Go again. Okay, here we go. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Come on, what a great scripture. Hmm. If I stop that, here's a great hashtag. We, we should just have bumper stickers that says, hashtag, in this world you will have trouble. Right? That's a fact. But once again, that's half the truth for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? It said, in this world you will have what? Trouble. trouble. In this what? World. world. In this what? World. world. You will have trouble. But we don't live for the world. Amen? This is not our home. That's the perspective of hope, of, of certainty that says, man, if I choose to believe in God's word, i got to choose to believe in God's entire word, not just part of it. Amen? Amen? I identify and acknowledge that in this world, I will have struggles. I have to navigate through backed up plumbing and all the above. But the facts are, God came and gave us Jesus that we might have peace, that peace that is out of this world. And Jesus says, but take heart. And when this word take heart, it, it talks about have hope, an assurance. Know this, Jesus says. I've already overcome the world. Why? Because he knows the beginning from the end. And he knows that in the end, he wins. And those who are with him are on that victorious team. Amen? Amen. So the facts are, it's not about not having bad days. The facts are that Jesus promises to offer us something as we navigate through those bad days. But now let's get um, a little bit further to what we talked about earlier. Um, here's three fill in the blanks for you. Pain is a promise. Once again, this isn't God. Let me, let me. This is where the sovereignty of God and the free will of mankind, this is this amazing tension, right? Once again, it's why our theology matters. The word of God does not say that God, I don't believe for a moment, but okay, there's things that we go through in life that are challenging, sickness, um, loss of a job, things like that. Now, sometimes I, man, I, I, I can do a whole other week on, well, it's just part of God's plan. I, I don't think for a moment that it was part of God's plan for Adam and Eve to fall, right? It wasn't his plan. He knows all things. He's sovereign. So this is where this, this faith element to say, man, I believe in the sovereignty of God that he knows all things, all the above. But somewhere within that, he created humanity with free will. And the free will of humanity, they chose to disobey. And because of that decision, not God's decision, not God's will, but because their decision, we have the effects of sin. I believe that. That's what God's word says. And prove me otherwise, please. Because that's not God's heart. God's heart was created. He was a, a creation of man. Do I understand all of how that works out? I'll tell you right now, I don't. I don't. But the reality is, is, is our life, and I think this is what helps me. And I think this is what God was pointing to in Scripture, is we're caught in this tension of the sovereignty of God, the power of God, and our 
our responsibility, the reverence of God and our responsibility on earth as, as humans. I don't think for a moment that, that it's part of God's plan that Brittany be saved. Convince me otherwise. No way. That's not God's heart. I'll tell you right now that's not God's heart. Once again, sickness, sorrow, all the above, those are effects of a broken world that was brought about through sin because of fallen humanity, not the plan of God. Yes? Right? So the, the, the facts are, pain is a promise because of sin, not because God says, well, these knuckleheads deserve it. No, God gave us grace. He gave us mercy. We don't. Those who are bound in Jesus, we don't get what we deserve. Amen? And we get something that we truly don't deserve. We get His grace. We get His mercy. Struggle is certain. These are things Jesus did say. Suffering, and I put in quote, in this world is inevitable. Pain, struggle, suffering. Sorry, that's the, the sad truth, not because of God's heart. God's heart says, hey, take heart, have hope in me, because this world is going to be done and gone, and you can live for eternity. Amen? Seek first my kingdom, learn to, to live in a, with a, a biblical viewpoint and a, 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 a lens that looks at things and struggles in this world to know that this was a part of God's plan. But in this, God is working for our good. Amen? That's what God's word does say. Romans 8, 28. God works in all things. How many things? All things. He works in all things. He works through the... The best of times, even through the most challenging of times, God works to bring about His good. We see, throughout Scripture, uh, let me go back. I'll read this part. Throughout Scripture, countless men and women, just like you and I, face seasons, situations, and circumstances that were out of their control and often more than they could handle. Yes? Let me go back to those fill in the blanks. Unfortunately, Jesus said in John 16, in this world, you will have struggle. Pain is a promise. Struggle is certain. Suffering is inevitable. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it is absolutely more than you can handle. Sorry. But I want to break that moment. It's more than you can handle. I'm telling you right now. Those struggles, that pain, those challenging circumstances, relationship struggles... All in love, I'm telling you right now, it is more than you can bear. But thanks be to God for His everlasting promise that He chooses to do life with us. Amen? Come on, let's, let's tackle this. Look at throughout Scripture. Gideon, he was inadequate, right? Moses had a, a speech impediment. He was overwhelmed. God, I can't leave these people. Imperfect people God used to do great things for the kingdom. Esther was afraid. Jonah rebelled. Right, let's go to Jonah real quick. I'm just going to read that. Yeah, we got time. Let's go to Jonah. Man, I had a picture. Um, side note, did, did anyone see that guy get swallowed up by a whale this yeah. last week? I forgot. I had a picture to queue up. I, Brent's there. No, I don't. Um, I had it on the computer. This dude got swallowed up by a whale. Look it up. Google it. And that's true. I think. Right? Um, it looks to be true. Um, but, the, but the facts. He got swallowed up by a whale. He's a lobster diver. He searches for lobster or whatever. And all of a sudden he turned around and here was this big whale. And it swallowed him up and he fought it and it spit him out. And he survived. Whew, let's go check out Jonah. But listen, Jonah 2-2. This is crazy. Jonah 2-2. Uh, it says, from inside the fish, Jonah prayed. Man, how many of you feel like you're inside the fish some days, getting swallowed by this world, man? How many of you can say you've been swallowed by a fish? Just that guy is all I know, and he's alive. Dude, I want to meet this guy. But here's the fact. Sometimes life finds us through pain, struggle, suffering inside the belly of the whale. Yeah? It's tough. It's got to be Oh, man. But Jonah says this, 
from the belly. Well, in my distress, I called to the Lord. He what? He called to the Lord. In his distress. This wasn't someone that had it figured out. This wasn't someone that, that was just cruising along in life. No, this dude was swallowed by a well, and he called out to the Lord in his distress. And here's what the Word of God does say. And he answered me. Does that mean he never had to navigate through the belly of the well? No, he had to navigate through that because that was part of the circumstances, all of the above. Did Jonah have to pray to God? No. Our choices matter, amen? He was out of options. What's that? He was out of options. He was out of options, but he still had the option whether to turn to God or not. So once again, here's this tension between sovereignty and free will. I mean, there's this amazing tension. And that's what we're caught up. If you would stretch out a rubber band, I, I, I saw this illustration one time about stretching out a rubber band. And because of the sovereignty and free will of mankind, there's, if you pull up each side of the rubber band, there's tension, right? And that, that's what we do life. We do life right in the middle of, of, of the sovereignty and the reverence of God and the free will and responsibility of mankind. Your choices matter. Yet God is supreme overall, amen, right? So somewhere within that, so, so again, and let's look at 2.7. It says, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your temple. So God heard, I believe God moved in that moment, spit him out, and then he was forever changed. Man, if you cried out to the Lord and fell as well, you're going to be changed, right? Amen, right? But sometimes... I don't think we have to wait until we have to get swallowed up by a well to make those decisions, yes? Come on now. Here's a bigger faith question. Why would God allow you to have more than you can handle? Here's two reasons. I'm here to tell you. Jesus never said, God never said he would never give you more than you can handle. Because the effects of sin, life will probably be more than you can handle. Because we navigate through a broken, fallen, sin-sick world, life in a worldly standpoint will be more than you can handle. Why would God allow us? Why would a gracious God allow you to have more than you can handle? Two reasons. Number one, to depend on His presence. Amen. Come on. You weren't made to do life on your own. If life, if we could do life and know that it was never more than we could handle, we wouldn't need Him. But because of the fall of mankind, because of sin, Jesus was always making a way. It is God's heart that He's redeeming mankind back to Him. And He says, only in me and through me. Listen, when we grow in faith, who's got 1 Corinthians 10, 13? That be that for us. It says, uh, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Amen. So here's the misconception. Here's the flip side of that is it does say that, that, that God will never. Allow you to be tempted more than you can bear. He says he'll give you a way out. But temptation and the effects of the world, those aren't necessarily the same thing. It's, it, it, the heart of it is because of sin, right? But the facts are, the word of God, when I read it, it says that when you are tempted, when you're what? Tempted. tempted and that's connected by sin. That's the enticement. That's this, this fish hook of the enemy. When you are tempted, this trap. When you are tempted, he says he'll always give a way what? What would he always provide? Yes. A way out. So once again, here's this sovereignty of God, and here's this tension of choice. But just because God gives us a way out of temptation, does that mean we always choose it? No, we always This is this, I don't quite totally get it. I don't quite 100%, I'll tell you right now, I don't quite 100% know how it works. Between the sovereignty of God, knowing all things, and yet our choices matter and can 
shape history? Wow. That's significant. That is so significant. But the facts are, why would God allow us to, to have more than we can handle? Because of the fall of man, the effects of sin, we need to depend on his presence. Listen, I, I've shared this before, is that in life, when, when we are, when we're born, um, and we, we want to grow up, the world says, when we're born, what are you teaching your kids to do? Walk and talk, right? So all the days of your life, Trish, you wanted to make sure that Cole, that you would be there right with him all the time, right? And even when we became 16 years old, you said, now you just sit in that passenger seat. I'm going to drive you everywhere. Is that what you told Cole? Do you think he was up for that? No. Get out, Mom, right? But when we're raising kids, we want to raise kids that they're successful what? Adults. Adults. Right? So, yes, and that's good. That, and, and that is, to some degree, this, this understanding we want in Christ, raise our children up to become, uh, have good character and have a uh, good moral compass. And we want to do that in a way that when we're not with them, that they have, they have independence, right? Right? I hope. Can you believe it? Man, this is a wild Father's Day. So Elijah is technically moving into his senior year. Holy smokes, how did that happen, right? And man, I'm old. Senior year. I was almost the age of Elijah when I started at this church. As he ain't almost, that's crazy. But here's the fact. The natural process is that we would raise our kids to become independent, right? We want them to do well on their own, yes? yes. But in the spiritual world, we do things opposite. God says, because you're independent, you were, you were away from me, you were on your own. I want you to grow in faith and become dependent upon me. That's what God said. That's the ways, that's the ways of the world, which is necessary. But the way God does things, when we come to Him, we're born again. We're what? Born again. He doesn't say, grow up, figure this life out, because you're going to do it on your own. He says, no way. This life will be harder than you can bear on your own. You're going to navigate through times that are, that are more than you can handle. You need my presence to be with you. Depend on me. Here's a life principle for you. Every temptation is an invitation, listen, to depend on Christ. Every temptation is an invitation to depend on Christ. We need to learn to lean into the faithfulness of God. Amen? Right? We need to learn to grow in our dependent, to be becoming dependent upon God. That we do trust His sovereignty. Why would God allow us to have more than we can handle? Because earth is our home, amen? He's making a way to be with him forever. He says, in this life, you will have struggle. Pain is a promise. Struggle is certain. Suffering is inevitable. He says, but this, depend on my presence. I'm going to do life with you. I'm going to walk with you. The image of the good shepherd in Psalm 23, that's the presence of Jesus with you in your life. He's a good shepherd. He's a good what? Shepherd. He leads me. He takes care of me. That's what he desires to do. He says, he, he, he talks about his enemies. He doesn't say that he removes all enemies from my life. No, he says that I'm going to work in your life. I'm going to go with you, and we're going to face those enemies together. We 
We've got to depend on His presence. Number two, we experience His power. Who's got 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10? Pastor Bill, is that you? Each time He said, My grace is all you need, my power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. God brings strength in our weakness when we trust in Him, right? When we put our dependence upon Him in His presence and in His power, that's when the things that absolutely are more than we can handle, that's how we get through Because I want to do things God's way, amen? Jesus made it clear 19 times in one prayer, in one discussion, 19 times He says, this is the way the world says it. He says, but here's the way I'm calling you to do it. It's significant. See, here's our last life principle. Never let the presence of a storm cause you to doubt the presence and power of God. Amen? You see, the facts are in this life, there will be times that, that are absolutely more than you can handle. But Jesus says, depend on me. Let me be your strength. Experience my power. Because I got this. You can't do this on your own. But I choose to do life with you. Isn't that a gracious God? Amen? Amen? Amen. So, did Jesus say that he would never give you more than you can handle? I don't see it. But thanks be to God that we can't, that he gave us a way, amen? That we depend upon him. That we go with His presence and His power to navigate through life. It doesn't make those challenges go away. But it gives us perspective. God brings strength out of our weaknesses. And through His presence and power, we will overcome. Yes? Amen. And that's a promise. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you that we can celebrate your word. That you desire to do life with us. God, you are with us. You are for us. You go before us. You stand behind us. Lord, teach us to do life through that lens, even amidst the things in life that are the storms of life that are around us. Lord, help us never lose sight of you in the storm, just like Jonah did, just like Peter did as he, as he sunk in the waves. But God, in all things, you always provide a way. And the only way out is in you. God, I pray that you bless this teaching, that you would continue to shape our words and our thoughts and our perspective, that no doubt in this life there will be things that we cannot handle on our own, and we can choose to surrender them to you. In this time of prayer, with every head bowed and eyes closed, If you would just take for a second and just close your fists, hold your fists up. Those things that bring challenge and pain and struggle and suffering, things that are hard to understand. We can't handle them on our own, but God says, man, surrender them to me because I got this. I can and I will. Would you just open your hands and release those to God? God, you know every heart that is here today, that is listening online. And Lord, those situations and those concerns that they have released and surrendered to you today. God, we confess that we need to fully depend on you in our own strength. God, would you bring that peace that you talked about in your word today? Would you overwhelm your people with your peace, your power, and your presence? I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Awesome. Man, so great to be with y'all. And don't forget, we're going to wrap this series up next week, next Sunday.
another what things Jesus didn't say. You don't want to miss it? But well, we got a great service, Father's Day today. Happy Father's Day to y'all.